So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be back down on this floor and not up there. Some years ago, two competitors were talking and one said, it's a great pity that Bill Irvin is up there and not down here judging. And the other competitor said to him, I'd rather he was up there. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, late yesterday afternoon, Bobby had some sort of eye infection. It's called conjunctivitis. And she was fortunate she was able to get an appointment, specialist this morning, but she sends her apologies. She's going to be unable to be with us this morning. So the notes I have given you will still be applicable, but I have changed my thoughts slightly as to the type of lecture I was going to concentrate more on dancing as a couple. But you're going to have to, unfortunately, put up with this beautiful body by itself. Now, thank you. Now, over the years, ladies and gentlemen, I've had the pleasure and the honor of teaching some of the finest dancers in the world. And I've had little jingles that many of them have written down. And when we talk about the quality of movement, that is a package. You cannot put it down to one specific point. You must put it as a package because it's all tied together. Now, one of these jingles is a package in itself. I call it my seven Ps. This is where some of our foreign people will have difficulty in understanding this. My seven Ps are practice and perseverance of postural principles promises physical perfection. Now I will repeat that. Practice and perseverance of postural principles promises physical perfection. Now, what is meant by those seven Ps? How to put your body in the prepared position to move and to dance. Now, one of the first things I think of in achieving this postural principle. Number one, when I take my position to myself, I think, take my stomach to my back and take my back to my stomach. Take my stomach to my back and my back to my stomach. So I am now trying to put my body in a postural position that is lined up. Because if you're not balanced, you will never have the control to move easily and efficiently over the floor. But when I have achieved this stomach to back and back to stomach, I have then got to think of creating a poised line to the floor. Now, how do I achieve that? I think of taking my arms outwards from the side of my body. And as I am taking my arms outwards from the side of my body, I feel that my arms are connected to my back. I feel that my arms and my back become a unit. I simply do not put my arms into position. I elevate the arms and I feel that when I elevate the arms, my shoulder blades are like sliding doors. I roll the shoulder blades slightly down and together so that I feel that I am in a perfectly naturally balanced position. In this correct position, any sign of strain is locked completely incorrect. It should be a balanced line. Now, once I have achieved the arms in this beautiful position, from the back, if you look at the head, the elbows, and the coccyx, the tip of your spine, you should actually be able to see the perfect shape of a diamond. You should see the shape of a diamond in your back. 
Now, how I then think of going a little bit further? I then try to feel <clears throat> that my spine is lengthened downwards. Now, if you think of those words, the spine is lengthened downwards. Now, people say you stand up. If you stand up, you get stiff. I never stand up. I only think of standing down. I put my weight down. Now, for example, if I give you another example, I haven't got a hook on the top of my head pulling my head up. So the only way I can make my spine long is by putting it down. I lengthen the spine from top to bottom down to the floor, not up to the ceiling. So my weight is going down. Now when I get the weight, and this I feel is very important for a good fundamental principle in dancing. When I let the weight travel down my body, it's first of all, it's got to be balanced through the hips. It is balanced through the hips before it is balanced in my knees. And from my knees, it goes through my feet. And after it goes through my feet, it goes onto the floor. The weight goes through your body onto the floor. So weight is lowered through your hips, through your knees, through your ankles, into your feet, onto the floor. Now I'm going to talk about something which I have never discussed in a lecture before. But I think as I'm doing this lecture on my own, it may give you food for thought as where this weight is going. Why so often are you unable when you take a dance position? Why are you unable and so often to be able to show a position like the third step of a reverse turn and be perfectly balanced? Why when you close your feet in a waltz are you always sometimes going too much forward or putting your heels down too quickly? Why are you not able to control the balance. Now many years ago, I was traveling on a plane with Richard Gleave. We were coming from America and he had bought a book of which he loaned me just to read on the plane. This book was called The Thinking Body and I became fascinated with this book and I bought one. It became my Bible for many years. And one of the points in this book was describing the foot, just describing the foot. And when I became aware of the values of this particular article I was reading, I can honestly say it improved my balance because I was aware of what I was doing. It improved my balance by 100%. 100% it improved my balance when I became aware of the formation of the foot. Now your foot, ladies and gentlemen, is an arch. Now every arch has got a keystone and your foot is exactly the same. Your foot is an arch and that arch has a keystone which is called the talus. It's the part in the front of you where your shoelaces tie in that part. Now the leg bone goes down and it goes into that talus. Now if you think all the weight of your body is going through your legs into your feet and it's passing through this part of your foot. But there's a very interesting point here to be discussed. Very interesting indeed. This talus, like any keystone, if you look at the tendons, if you take your shoe off and you curl your toes up or curl your toes down, you will see that the tendons begin right at the point of your big toe. It is then transferred through the front of your foot and it's connected to the muscles in the front of your legs. You have another one which goes under your foot and that can go through to the muscles of your back of your leg. You cannot see that. But the important part is that those tendons do not, are not attached 
to this particular bone that is called the talus. It has got no ligamentary attachment. Now because it has no ligamentary attachment, you've got to be able to feel that you can use the tendons and your toes. Now for example, why is it so difficult sometimes when you see someone doing a reverse wave and they put their heels down because they're not able to control their feet. A girl who takes too big a step, she immediately puts the heel down because she cannot control it because she's gone beyond the point of no return where the toes and the tendons into the toes can be used. Now for example, if I had to dance a feather step, when I get to the point here, in the third step of a feather, I feel that I am able to grip the floor with the tendons because if I take the foot outside, I've landed behind the foot, the front part of the foot, because this, ten, this talus has got no muscular attachment, I cannot control the lowering of my heel. Look at a beginner when he does a lock step. Now he takes the next step forward. I have landed almost on the ball of my foot. Because there is no attachment from the toes to the muscles, my heel must go down <coughs> without control. If you dance a reverse wave and take a long step back, your heel has got to go down. You've got to understand why it's got to go down because you have landed on the part of the foot that cannot support the weight of your body. Now, for example, if I take the same reverse wave, and I take it. Now, I feel the toes. I feel the toes have got enough foot pressure to balance. Now, when I lower the front part of your leg, <coughs> excuse me, is moving forward slowly. Now, as the shin bone moves forward slowly, you can see that the left heel will lower at the speed I want it to lower. And that's important. It gives me the control necessary. You can see the timing of the lowering of the heel. Because the weight... <coughs> Get a glass of water there. <coughs> That's caused by smoking. I'm making no excuses. It's your bloody cigar that's causing it. It's your bloody cigar that's causing it. Now, if I take another example, that when I close my feet in a waltz, lovely thought to close your feet in the waltz. Now, when I lower, again, the shin bone is moving forward. The weight is towards the toes, never behind the tendons of the front of the foot, never. I can lower the heel exactly at the speed I want to exactly at the speed I want to. Now, the degree of pressure is determined by me, but if I get the weight fractionally too far back, I'm going to put my heels down too quickly. Now, through the understanding of this foot, it's got a shape. <coughs> I can give you another example. When a bird lands on a tree, its claws hold the tree, otherwise it would fall off. Now we do not curl our toes to hold the floor, but you do in actual fact take the toes and press them slightly down. That will activate the tendons at the front of your foot, which then goes through your legs to give you the balance you are required. For example, when a girl is moving backwards, how often have we got to say to them, please increase your foot pressure to the front of your foot. So as you move back, you can feel the triangular base where I have got weight on the front foot and in the back foot. Now when I lower the back heel slowly, I can do it almost as in technique that the heel of the standing foot will lower almost when the moving foot is next to it or almost next to it. I'll do that slowly in a moment and show what I'm after. Now, 
When I talk about quality, quality comes from control of moving the weight efficiently from foot to foot. Now there are three main types of control. You've got timing control, you've got balance control, and you have got muscular control. Now if you lose one, you lose all three. Lose one, you lose all three. If I dance a waltz and my weight drops back, my balance control is gone, I'm too quick going down, so my timing control is gone. I cannot use the muscles of my leg, so the muscular control is gone. So you must think of those three controls, balance control, timing control, muscular control. They're all mutually re related. They're mutually related completely to each other. Now I'm going to move on to what I think is one of my pet subjects. I've discussed the transference of the weight going through the body, through the hips, through the legs, through the feet, and onto the floor. Now we're going to talk about moving. What do we do, what am I doing now to move? Now that depending on the magnitude of force, the magnitude of force that I apply to the floor will give me the speed I want. Fast or slow. But the magnitude of force that I want against the floor surface depends on the angle of force. The angle of force. Now, for example, if I take the first step of a foxtrot, I feel that the angle of force is coming from the toe of the back foot through my body onto the front foot. Now, when I have moved onto the front foot, I want to move forward again. Now, I give my pupils a little exercise. I tell them to simply swing the non-weight bearing leg. Just let it swing. Then I ask them to go onto it. Now to get onto that foot, I've got to press the toes against the floor to move me forward. If I simply step on the foot and move the leg, I haven't moved my body. So my body is behind the foot. But when I take the foot forward, I press the toes against the floor, the angle of force against the floor is moving my body onto that foot. So I'm using my toes on every action. Even when I go from this quick to that quick, I am simply using the toes to move the body forward. Now this is why I have chosen this part of the lecture to be able to talk to you about this very, very important part of your anatomy, your feet your toes and your ankles. Now, to be able to do this well, you've got to understand the principle of dancing from closed to closed. Now, I talk about this principle of dancing from closed to closed every single day I teach in my life, every day of the week. Now, what is meant by dancing from closed to closed? Dancing from close to close, if I give an example, if I take one step forward on the right foot, one step in movement is completed when my feet are again together. Now, for example, if you think of a waltz, a waltz has got three foot placements. One, two, three. But it only has two steps. It only has two steps. The first step is completed when my left foot is close to my right foot. When I go to the side, that step is completed when my right foot is close to my left foot. So I have two steps, complete steps, three foot positions. But if you think of it as two steps, you can have so much more time. Time is the essence to be able to show the top class performer makes it look effortless. He seems to have so much time to spare as long. Now, for example, what is one of the most common faults in a waltz and foxtrot from a girl? One of the most common faults is dancing from open to open. They take the first step and they shoot from there to there. There is no way they can use their feet, there's no way they can use the legs because they cannot pass the weight through their feet. Now, if you think of what I have just said, dancing from close to close, that step is finished here. Now, this is where I'm going to lift my trousers and show you a knee action I think is vitally important. 
From this point here, I have completed step one. Now if you watch my knees, you can see the knees almost rolling to the inside edge of the foot. Now as the knees go to the inside edge of the foot, you can see how the thighs, the legs, are moving as a unit, one unit. I am not moving my legs away from each other. Now that knee is still going in the wrong direction. Now when I move back, the knee is turning, and by turning the knee, I am depressing the hip line down, and as I depress the hip line down, I have created automatic sway by swaying down and not trying to sway up. I never think of swaying up ever. I only think of swaying down because my weight pressure is going down through my knees, through my ankles, through my feet, onto the floor. Now you'll see the same thing when a girl dances a foxtrot. This was what Bobby was supposed to do this morning. So you'll see her going back and shooting the leg back from open to open. Immediately, the body will drop. And when the body drops, that young lady is going to be heavy. Because there are, if you move back in the foxtrot, you will see again, I move the right foot back with first the ball, then the toe, then the ball of the foot in the floor, releasing the front toe from the floor, I finish in a triangular base. I move the front foot back with the heel in the floor, slowly lowering the back heel. When my leg is under my body, I release it to let it go back. So the leg is released from the hinge joint, which is your knee. Your knee is a hinge joint. You allow your leg to swing from the knee exactly as a door swings from a hinge. Now if I had to dance a few bars of foxtrot, I'm going to pick up another point which is very important if you think of the technique of most dances. The person who is moving backwards is in the inside of the turn. That person who is moving backwards has got what is referred to in technique as a no foot rise. A no foot rise. When the heel of the front foot is still connected to the floor. Now after a no foot rise, for example, if I had to dance a reverse turn in the waltz, when I have got commenced to rise at the end of four, continue, continue to rise in five with no foot rise, that heel is still in the floor, but after a no foot rise, most of the time I am rising. Out of a no foot rise, I am rising, but not in the foxtrot. Now if you dance a feather or a feather finish, when you have arrived at a feather finish in this position here, taking the sixth step, I have got no foot rise in my right foot. I am now, after the no foot rise, I am lowering. I am not rising. So this point here of lowering from a no foot rise to a down is where the utmost control is vital for the control of the following figure that I should be able to feel my triangular base. Now from the triangular base, I lower the heel slowly. I come towards my foot, it's passed under my body, and again, you will feel your triangular base under your feet. Now, I've been asked before, when I discuss the triangular base, what is meant by a triangular base? It is when the weight is distributed between the heel of the front foot, the ball of the back foot, or the toe of the back foot, and your pelvis. Now, what is minimum, what is maximum? It depends whether you're going up or whether you're going down. But I have a basis which I try to teach that when I step forward, in that position, I should be able to go forward or backwards. You can make a test and take that step only a half an inch further forward, and I'm going to have difficulty going forward or backwards, because I cannot release my weight, because my weight is caught between my feet. And when your weight is caught between your feet, you can't use your body rhythmically and efficiently to move your weight from this one position to the other. Now if you watch a few bars of Fox, you'll be able to see moving in forward or backward movements. I'm going to discuss another point, the same principle of close to close from a promenade position. Now if I move this back from here, you will see exactly the timing of the foot. The timing of the foot to stop if I feel like it.
to answer three step and stop if I feel like it where my feet never really leave the floor my feet are always on the floor this is my best friend I caress it I stroke it I love it I never scratch it I never ever try to damage it I want to caress it and feel the ease of movement from foot to foot it's when you're dancing forward as a man you have the same point I move my right foot forward when the left foot is under my body I feel that my body is almost being pulled through from my right foot onto the left now in this position I am trying to create a lovely picture for my toes right through to the top of my head but in doing this I feel I'm able also to do something which I see so many people today not paying nearly enough attention to the tracking of the legs to see a three-step going through and you see the beautiful tracking of the legs to see a hover and as you come out to see your leg being placed under your body where you can project but you still see your legs beautifully under your body instead of seeing something that's being thrown out from the back or a foxtrot that's being thrown out with the toe finishing in line of dance the parallel feet alignments the parallel beautiful feet alignments to see it coming a reverse turn and you can see that the leg is completely under my body instead of seeing the leg being moved leftwards now when the man's leg is moved leftwards what's going to happen to the girl's right foot it goes back and it moves rightwards as well taking her completely out of balance instead of placing her delicately on her feet now if I take this position once again and talk about close to closed from a promenade position how many people have problems because they don't basically understand this principle now I'm going to say this slowly because when the man that taught me this principle gave me this little expression I asked him to repeat it three times because the first time he said it I didn't understand what he was talking about at all but by the time he had said it three times it started to sink in when you take a promenade position you're thinking of close to close for example I've taken the first step for example from a telemark now when I go through in the right foot the left the right hip sorry the right hip must reach the front part of my right foot before my left foot reaches my right foot I'll say that again and I'll demonstrate it the right hip must reach the front part of the right foot before the left foot reaches the right foot now if I do it incorrectly you will see that action look at nearly every single chassis that is being danced where the girl and the man they go through they're so fast through the leg that their weight is still sitting on that leg they have not gone through the leg this is still close to closed that your body or your hip must reach the front part of that foot before that foot has reached it I'm on the foot I'm over the foot now that I'm over the foot I can use the foot to come out of it now just before I come to a conclusion of this ladies and gentlemen there is there are many problems in footwork today but there is one fault that 98 percent of the girls are using this fault today most of the girls are in trouble because of the man the judges will be looking for this particular they won't have to look it sticks out like a sore thumb the amount of ladies dancing a chassis today and dancing toe heel on the left foot top class competitors or so called top class competitors now the 90% of this problem is caused by trying to move from an up to an up when the girl's weight is on her left foot she should be allowed to stand on the left foot with the weight on the left side of the body to be allowed to place 
the next step to the side and slightly back. There is a lovely expression which I use when teaching people how to chassis. Two words, three syllables, climbing up. You take a chassis, it's cli, ming, up. So you can feel as a man, cli, ming, up. You can still see the ankles being used out of the standing foot. To give you the feeling, if you take a hover, you can see again the ankles being used with the weight, the orientation of weight from my head, through my hips, through my knees, onto the front foot. The weight being con connected from your head to your toes onto that beautiful piece of wood. So why do many, so many of the girls have problems when they dance a chassis? Because the man starts a chassis, I've already seen it, Sonny. He starts a chassis on this line and goes that way. He moves the girl out of line. And because he moves the girl out of track, she is unable to feel that she can stand on her foot and take the step. She is being pushed through the foot. The only alternative thing left for her balance is to put that heel down. So if you have got nothing better to do this week, ladies and gentlemen, nothing better to do, whilst you're watching the competition, just have a little quick look at chassis in waltz and in quick step and see how many girls put the heel down. You will be absolutely amazed. Now, I haven't done a lot of dancing. I've done a half an hour of talking. I have tried to give you some of the very important fundamentals, the seven P's, practice and perseverance of postural principles, promises physical perfection. The spine is lengthened from the top down. Think of the feet, toes, legs. Think of your tracking of your feet. Wherever you are going, feel the legs being tracked underneath your body so you can feel that you're on your feet. Feel the tracking so that your legs fall under your body. You can feel that you're on your feet so you can feel better balance. Then you will have much more chance for your three controls, balance control, timing control, muscular control to be used efficiently. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the committee for inviting me. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Thank you.